welcome to Undiet Your Coaching Practice Podcast. I'm Stephanie Dozier, clinical nutritionist, certified intuitive eating counselor, and creator of the Going to Beyond the Food Method. And after a 25 year dieting career, I decided to say hell no to diet culture and undiet my life, which also included my coaching practice. I'm on a mission to help all coaches undiet not only their life, but their coaching business. If you want to throw down diet culture, you're in the right place. Ready, sisters? Let's do this. Hello, my dear sister colleague. I'm excited to be with you today. And before we get started about talking about body image for health professional, I want to give you a little bit of context of where this episode came from. Yearly, we do a survey in our professional community, and we did it in 2020. Among the many questions that we ask, two that I want to share with you today. Number one, we ask people to describe their current relationship to food. And 58% of the respondents said they were learning to be an intuitive eater, and about 25% were experienced intuitive eater. But here's where it gets interesting. You see those stats for intuitive eating. Let's ask the question about body image. Well, it's much different. 75% of people say that they are at the beginning of their journey with healing their body image and they have a lot of work to do. And 8% only are comfortable with their body image. Body image is a real issue, not only for professional, but for all the people. Even more for people identify as women. We need to do our work as professional so that we can help the people do their work with body image. And I'm going to teach you some notion here that are coming from our mentorship program, right? The professional course we have to help people become intuitive eating coaches and body image coaches and mindset coaches. Obviously, I cannot share the entire the entire six month in a 30 minute episode, I'm going to take some pieces out of it for you to understand what you need to work on right now. Like if you're part of that 75% of professional that are at the beginning of their journey, healing their relationship to body image, what do you need to focus on? Where do you need to go to get your information? What do you need to do? That's what we're going to talk about this episode here. But before we go further, I want you to fully understand the impact of not being liberated from body image struggle for you personally and on your business, because it does have a correlation. As you know, when we are not comfortable with our body image, we struggle with food very simply because food was used in our journey to shrink, manipulate our body. So we've distorted our relationship to food in order to manipulate our body's beauty and size. So when we struggle with our body image, we consequently struggle with food. We lack confidence to show up. That is probably the most disheartening consequence of poor body image in your entrepreneur journey. And I see that day in and day out. Thankfully for our professional that we work with, we teach them right away on the first week mindset tool so they can start working on their body image so that when it's time to go out and market their business, they're confident showing up in front of the camera, especially the camera. Here's a few more ones. I'm going to kind of go through the list rapidly here. When you struggle with your body image, you show up from your fear, not from your heart. And that's very evident in your coaching. You question yourself all the time. You have doubts with every decision you take. You think there's something wrong with you, why you're not successful, why your business is not successful. You don't have big ambitious plan for your business because you're playing small, because you see small, because you're not confident. And you cope with perfectionism. 
oh my God, this one. <laughs> you get stuck in the minutia of detail in your business, trying to do everything perfectly. So you're trying to make up for your flaw. Anyone can relate to this? You're fixated on the appearance of your business instead of your body of work. You're really focused on how people are seeing your business. You have a difficult time doing hard things. And let me tell you why. Because you don't have a good handle on your mind. Your mind controls you. If you're struggling with body image, you are the victim of your mind. And you'll understand why as I'm teaching you today. Therefore, it tells me that you haven't learned how to manage your mind and make your mind work for you. So when you're faced with challenges, when things don't go your way, you struggle. Instead of seeing the challenges as opportunity, you collapse. And for many, many women, money mindset is a big issue when we struggle with body image. We have a fear of investing in ourselves because we don't trust ourselves. And here's the last one. You make up your, dif your perceived deficiency because of your body image in certification. As a coach, you'll go on and take certification after certification after certification, trying to get a level of confidence when your confidence is intrinsic. This is not just you. This is what I see in women health professional. But your client have the same broad range of impact in their life. And these are all side effect, normal side effect, expected side effect when someone is made to believe that his or her worth as a human is correlated to their capacity to achieve beauty and thinness. Helping someone, coaching someone through body image is not about the how. It's about the what and the why. The what is the body image and why in the heck do we struggle with body image? You can tell your client to stand in front of a mirror with positive mantra and affirmation all you want. It's not going to work because that's not the problem. And by the way, stop doing that. Okay, I'm going on a rant. <laughs> stop telling your client to journal their body image struggle away or to look at themselves in the mirror and tell themselves that they're beautiful. That is not only completely ineffective, that's dangerous. It makes the problem worse. It's unethical and shows how little you know about body image. And in fact, by doing these technique, you are keeping diet culture thriving. Because guess what? When your client are not going to heal their body image, they're going to feel worse and lost because they won't have an answer. They will likely go back to diet culture. And yes, it makes me mad. And it tells me that you haven't done your work for yourself. And now you're trying to go into the world and trying to help other women from a place of not being at peace with your own body. And we are hurting each other. When we're doing that, we are hurting each other. And one more thing, since we're on that topic. This is a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> you showing up on social media in your panties and your underwear is not the solution either. You are still centering you and your body and you keep us, the rest of us looking at you, stuck in believing that as a woman, we are our body. Stop doing that. Please stop, 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 stop. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Rant alert is done. Let's go on to teaching. <laughs>
can you tell that I'm like oozing passion about this? Because I am. Okay, let's look at what is body image. Body image is not only how we see ourselves in the mirror or the picture of ourselves, it's not unidimensional. Body image encompass four element. The perceptual body image, yes, how you see yourself, but it also include the cognitive body image, how you think about your body, the effective body image, how you feel about your body, and the behavioral body image, which is how you behave as a result of your perceptual, effective, and cognitive body image. The last one is huge. How we behave. Think about it. Remember earlier when I was telling you that the only reason why we struggle with food is because we have a body image struggle? Our behavior around food is 100% caused by the distorted body image that we live in. And as a health practitioner, your business result, how you behave in your business as a result of your body image is huge. Body image has four angle, four plane. Therefore, it must be healed. The protocol, the process must address those four plane. And it must be done in an order in which the brain, the human brain, will effectively respond. Number one, we must address the perception of our client's body and your body if it's you doing the work here. Second, we need to go into the emotional body. Third, the mental body. And last, how we behave. This is when the last step, how we behave, this is when you can coach your client to go in front of the mirror. Not saying mantra and positive affirmations because that doesn't work. But yes, we do need to go in front of the mirror. But that's the last step. Once we've put in skill set into our client or even into yourself before we go in front of the mirror. Okay, next. Why do we struggle with body image? This is where as a professional you need to be extremely clear. You need to clearly understand why women struggle with body image. And if you do not understand, you will not be able to explain it to your client. You will not be able to clearly teach them why they experience body image the way they do. And if you don't, People, your client will think that they did something wrong to be struggling with this, that they are not good enough to change how they see their body, that they are broken. And my dear colleagues, when we don't explain the why, we empower diet culture. That's exactly what diet culture wants. It wants women to think that it's their fault as to why they're struggling with body image. And honestly, let's make a parallel with any oppressive system. That's how an oppressor wants their victim to behave. They, an oppressor wants his or her victim to feel like they're the problem. If you don't believe me, go look up research on abusive relationship pattern and educate yourself on the pattern of behavior of the abuser. They pattern their behavior so that the victim feels stuck for years and decades thinking they are the problem. That culture is exactly the same way. That's why we as women stay stuck in that culture for hmm, 25 years for me. How long for you? Because all along, we thought we were the problem. I cannot emphasize how important it is for you to understand the why. So let me give you a a very abbreviated version of how this came about, how this came about for women to believe that they were their body. 
Normally I teach that with a slide. So let me give you kind of a visual. Let's imagine a chain, right? At the top of the chain, there's patriarchy. Patriarchy is a societal structure built in order to keep the male gender in power. It's a centric power model separating men and women, the gender of men and women, and pushing up men in position of power. That's patriarchy. To keep men in a position of power, patriarchy must keep women under control and suppress, again, in order to push up the male gender. And that's how patriarchy is. That's what patriarchy is. Now, diet culture is right, is the next link in your chain, right below patriarchy. Diet culture was created in order to sustain patriarchy. Diet culture is a system of oppression rooted in bigotry and racism in order to keep women isolated and focus on unachievable beauty standard. That effectively keeps women subdue, keeping patriarchy alive and well. Now, that unachievable beauty standard has changed over the time where patriarchy has been in place. As a matter of fact, it's been more than beauty standard over the century. It's been religion. It's been different elements. Right now, over the last give and take two century, we are very heavily involved in beauty standard to keep women oppressed. Currently, we are in a thinness and youth model. The weight loss industry and the beauty industry are what I call instrument of torture, like the body scale and the makeup is, placed in our life as a daily reminder for us as women of how unworthy we are, and we have to use this instrument of torture in order to be, in order to make up for our deficiency. The system of oppression that is diet culture teaches women that unless they are thin and beautiful, they are unworthy. And because the standards are so incredibly unachievable, it effectively keep us chasing that thinness and that beauty standard. It keeps us busy. It keeps us defocused on our power, isolated and subdue. Just in case you don't know what subdue means, it's about being quiet, inhibited, repressed and controlled. And diet culture does a pretty damn good job at this. We as women are socialized to this system, patriarchy, diet culture, and beauty standard, very young. In order for the system to work, we must comply. The best way to get us to comply is to socialize us almost from birth, right? The socialization to beauty standard for women start very early, three to four years old. Think about the first time you were given a Barbie doll. You were given that Barbie doll with these beauty standards that are physically unachievable. And then the programming started. And then following that a little bit later was the princess with blue eyes, blonde hair, perfect and waiting for her prince charming. And then it continued with the good girl syndrome and then social media in the teen years. And then gradually over time, we internalize these beliefs. By the time we're 18 to 20 years old, we're fully indoctrinated into the belief that we must be thin. We must stay young. We must be beautiful to be worthy of being a woman. And it's deeply encoded in our DNA so much so that we don't even know. We think it's normal. And furthermore, it is reinforced thousands of times every day. Just to make sure that we stay compliant, we have all these images and all this system in front of us to keep us complying 
indoctrinated into that culture. And then we adapt to this. And here's the crazy thing. We adapt to our inability to meet those standards, right? We become perfectionists, people pleaser. We have, we want to have the perfect family and the perfect kids and type A. And back to the top of the podcast with how body image affects your business. And then at 30 or 40 years old, you come across this information that diet culture perhaps even patriarchy or feminism, and you're like, holy shit, I've been duped my whole life. And then you go on a mission to change this, not fully understanding it, because let's face it, the information is not readily available right now. Because who would want this information to be readily available? Because if all the women wake up to this information, None of them would want to buy into their culture. So this information is suppress, right? That's why I say going beyond the food is a grassroots movement. We will never have enough money to suppress thy culture. We must do the work ourselves as women and teach it to other women. But because the proper way of healing, of recovering, of undoing this indoctrination is not taught readily. We end up in front of a mirror saying a mantra and hoping to God that our body image will change. And then it doesn't. And then we go back into the loop. So how do we heal body image? Four stages, right? Number one, we examine what we were thought. We were examining our socialization. We learn about patriarchy. We learn about diet culture. We learn this whole system of oppression. Then we look in on how we were thought. How was our mom relationship to it? Our sisters, our friend. That's the first step in body image process. You cannot go past that because if you skip that piece, your client, you will think it's you the problem. That's the first step. That's, that's why I, I said earlier, our mentorship program, the first step, we put our student through that. My client's program, the first step, we put our client through this. You, you cannot go beyond this. You cannot hope to have success if we don't do that first step first. Second step, disidentify. I say that's the step where you tear down the inner voice of oppression that reside within you. Remember, when the socialization stage is done, you become your own oppressor. You don't need anyone to tell you to chase the 10 ideal. It's well programmed into your mind. And it's that little mean girl voice that reside within your mind all the time. You need to tear that shit down. How do you do that? self-coaching. You need some kind of mind structure of a mindset framework to help you reprogram your belief and alter the way you think. For us, it's self-coaching, it's cognitive behavior therapy, it's a framework. We literally teach you step-by-step how to do that. Three, third step, autonomy. Once we are beginning the process of tearing down the internal voice, we understand it's not our fault. We need to go and claim back our freaking power. How do we do that? We reconnect with our power, which is within us, our innate wisdom. We reconnect with our body. Women like us who struggle with body image and we haven't done our work yet, we're head people. We're disconnecting from the thing that we hate the most, which is our body. We need a process to reconnect us. We use mindfulness in our program to help you feel and sense your body. And then intuitive eating, right? That thing we use, food, that we like distorted our relationship because of our body image issue, we're using that thing to claim our power back. And then the last step is liberation. You need to go out and affirm yourself into the world, into your now body. That's the end. If you're a coach, that fourth step 
That's where your relationship with your clients end, right? You send them on their way of liberation. And then the end process is a complete redefinition of who you are as a woman in this world. So healing body image is not an intellectual experience. It's an embodied experience with mental, emotional, and physical body. So there you have it. (laughs) That's the cold notes version of how you can go and heal your body image, what you need to learn as a coach, what you need to put yourself through. Because you cannot teach that from intellectual notion, right? You need to have done it to know what it feels so you can teach it to others. If you want to join us, go into the show note and then you can give me your information. You join us. The next episode that we have in season two is how to maximize your mindset for business success. I love you, sister. And I look forward to spend time with you on the next podcast. Ready to shed diet culture from your practice and help more clients do the same? Awesome. We've got free resources to get you started. Simply go to stephaniedodier.com forward slash pro series, all in one word, and access our three free training classes that are currently available. We also have a free PDF guide to intuitive eating and article about the non-diet approach. We also offer a variety of paid programs throughout the year to support you in your journey to undiet your coaching practice. Join us at stephaniedoze.com forward slash pro series, and I'll see you on the other side.